okay now most of you have done ta duty some time or the other are you currently teaching assistance to any course cs 101 most of you or some others for some other courses same way the phd students would have also done ta ship some time or the other today i am going to speak about effective communication while explaining some simple concepts to students of an introductory class students of an introductory class is an example but such occasions arise in life many times where people who are not familiar with a particular notion or concept or idea that you have and you are trying to explain it to them and those people do not belong even to the domain that you want to discuss things in i don't know whether i quoted an hilarious example which happened in 1976 or 77 some of us teachers had gone to attend the annual convention of computer society of india and we were staying in the ncert guest house where some school teachers from assam were also there and when they heard that these are professors from iit bombay teaching computer science they were keen to know something about computers so a colleague of mine while explaining how fast a computer is gave the following example he he asked one teacher how long it will take you to add two 10 digit numbers so they thought for a second and they said 2 3 seconds sir and then in his desire to explain the importance of the speed of computer professor bhavsa told them well a computer can add these two numbers a million times in one second we thought all of them would be impressed they were a bit but the fellow who had answered two or three seconds thought for a few more seconds and they said sir why would a computer add the same numbers a million times so you can see that when you explain the words that you use the sentences that you use the emphasis that you give might convey different meanings to people and therefore you have to be very careful when explaining concepts to people who are not from your domain so for you the concept may be simple but for them it is completely foreign the matter becomes more important when the people that you are explaining to are required to become expert through continuous dialogue such as a class or a course like this okay so the example that i have chosen today i i must observe my deep sense of satisfaction to see this normally empty hall filled up in the center stage so thank you very much so the example that i have chosen uh for a discussion is as follows we will do this exercise in two stages in the first stage i will presume that you are students of cs 101 of course you are not in fact you know programming far better than a introductory cs 101 student does but doesn't matter for a moment go back to the days when you were students in your mind okay i am explaining the simple concept of conditional execution of statements and the example that i have chosen to give to the students is finding out the largest of two given numbers so i first draw a flow chart of a conditional execution control structure paradigm i say there is a diamond box in which you put a condition if the condition is true then the statement on the right is executed and if the condition is false then the statement on the left is executed so of course i should say here for example true with the other side being false then i say i examine the two numbers a and b if a is greater than b i assign a to max otherwise i assign b to max and i come out the corresponding program would be something like this i declare the three locations a b and max i input the values of a and b if a is greater than b max is equal to a else max is equal to b i output max on the other hand i could also use another form of the conditional execution where there is nothing in the s part so i will explain that this is the possible flow chart where if some condition is true a statement is executed otherwise nothing is done and then you get out to utilize this structure to solve this problem i say 
I will assume that the first number is maximum, assign it to max. However, if b is greater than max, then I will reassign b to max. In any case, when I come out, max will hold the largest number. And I will explain this is the program. So far, so good. Now the question that I ask my students is this. And this is what you have to answer. So in next five minutes, you will answer this question. So there are two programs, one and two. The question that is being posed is, which of the two programs is better and why? Observe that this is a leading question. It forces people to think only in terms of one being better than the other. Both could be bad, both could be equally good. These are the possibilities that the students might think. Now assume that you are students and you are required to give the reasons that you feel to be stated and the answer that you wish to give for this question. Next five minutes, please write your roll number and name on the top and write the answer to this question. Five minutes. You won't take more than five minutes because you're all expert programmers. What is expected at this stage is you put yourself into the minds of your own mind when you were a student. It doesn't matter, you are still students in some sense. So think like how a student would think. He's been exposed to the conditional execution for the first time. He understands what it means to find out the largest of two given numbers. That much is common sense from the previous one. Okay. So write down the answer that you would give to this question. The why part is, of course, more important. It requires you to write a few sentences in English. Finished? Some people are still writing. Okay, another three minutes for everyone to complete. I hope you have not forgotten to write your roll number and name. Okay, everybody seems to be done. One, two, 
see four or five people are still writing. Yeah, another two minutes. I'm sorry, I forgot that I gave you extra three minutes. Those who have already written might want to reflect back on what they have written and check whether whatever they have written is at least written in correct English or not. So check the language now. First and more important was the concept to be expressed. Equally important is the language that you use to explain the concept. Okay, so now first thing you promise is you will not write anything more on that paper. That paper becomes your preliminary submission. But now I want you to do the following. This is the standard part of think, pair, share kind of notion. So people on the same bench, either in a single group or multiple groups, should discuss with each other the solution that you have written to this problem and convince your neighbors why your solution is right. If all neighbors have written exactly the same reasons and same choice, then it's okay. If it is different, discuss this and try to convince each other of why your solution is right. So what I suggest is you divide, you divide a row into sort of two parts or you can, you can discuss in three parts, whichever way, it doesn't matter. Uh, may, I, may I request, hello, may I have your attention please, the, the discussion is not like the free for all discussion in hostel corridors or hostels, so please murmur, don't speak very loudly, <laughs> the decibel level will go up. Uh, when you discuss amongst yourselves, uh, hello, may I have your attention please? You would have discussed, as I said initially, to convince your neighbors of the correctness of your solution and would have listened to your neighbors. But please don't exclude the possibility that this discussion throws up another answer or another reasoning which none of you had thought originally. That is also an objective of this discussion. Go back again for next three minutes.
All right. We will now we will now come to the concluding part of this discussion. May I have your attention, please? Enough discussions. I hope the people who discussed among themselves have reached some conclusion with all members of the group who discussed are aware of that. So let me speculate. To my mind, there are four possible answers. One, program one is better. Two, program two is better. Three, both programs are equally good. Four, four programs are equally bad and they lack some. Obviously, you would have considered perhaps not all four, but at least two possibilities definitely because that's a direct question. But maybe somebody has speculated on the other. So let me now come back to you. First, I would like to have opinions of those groups which concluded that program one is better. Can you raise your hands? A lot of them. Okay. So you tell us the reason. Why? Yeah. In case B is greater than max, B so, is greater than A. So let me write it in a simple form. It is more efficient. Uh, okay, then anybody else who would like to add to this? It more clearly explains the uh, use of conditional statement because it presents both the cases if as well as else explicitly. So the, for the first timers, it uh, more clearly explains the concept. More clearly explains. Okay. Anything else? No, so, uh, I, I don't understand. Are you? I am asking for people who claim program one is better. So, if program one is better, what is the additional uh, reason to give? Like, uh, program one, there may be a chance that as part will not execute. But that is true in any year. Hmm? Only one of them will not execute. I am not going to the statement that the execution program one is better. No. In the second part, you don't require it. See, by the way, when you are talking, the first part is better. You have to say, with respect to the second part, what is it in the first part which is better? So, these two statements cover whatever is better. Your explanation, either I am failing to understand. You are not able to put properly in the words, but that's okay. Please think about better wording. You might have a point. Make it in an email later. Any other thing from this side? Now, anybody who thinks part two is better, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, good, five. Okay, we have to start. Come again. So, here is an important question. If I have three variables, a, B and C and if I want to find out the largest of the three numbers using the first approach, I will have to develop a sort of tree. If A greater than B, then on that side I will again have to check if B greater than C, then max is equal to B, S max is equal to C and on the other side else, again if A is not greater than B, then if B is greater than C, max is equal to B. S max is equal to C. Try to explain the same calculation using the second approach. All that you will have to do is 
you will have to say max is equal to a if b greater than max max is equal to b if c greater than max max is equal to c try to extend this further to finding out the maximum of four given numbers if you use the first approach how complex will be your tree and how complex will be your program will it remain readable if you try to write it for four variables how long will it take to construct that program and test it correctly at least 3 to 4 times more time than writing out in the second manner the way to find maximum so one is easily extended to three or more numbers anything additional that somebody would like to mention some yeah. that uh, second is better because for a system for for a hardware it will be it better to implement if condition than to implement if else condition uh he is claiming that for hardware it is better to uh, uh, the uh, if then else condition then to implement so if condition then to implement if then else condition i am not convinced can you tell me which part of the hardware makes it more efficient to implement one kind <laughs> So this is pure speculation, not data by data. That is not data. It's not data. Any other observation? Yeah. Somebody there? But sir, the point was uh, no, 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 no. I am, I am now directing opinions about from those who say second program is better. That's all. No other, no other reason. Only this reason. That is easily extended. <laughs> Actually, it is not extendable. But perhaps as a consequence, the program would become more readable when extended. and extend anything else okay now the third option both programs are equally good fourth option both programs are equally bad nobody so you are not thinking like the true first year students you are thinking like seniors who have absorbed all programming practices but if you were a first year student would it not occur to some of you that if a and b both have the same value then what happens in these two cases in fact if i am a student who has just passed high school and got into this and somebody asked me this question which of the two numbers is larger if both numbers are same the correct logical answer is none of them is larger than the other both are same that is the logically correct answer and if it occurs to me as a high school pass out saying a master kya bol raha hai both numbers are same so how can one be larger than the other and since both the program insist on pushing out a value as larger amongst the two both are wrong in cases where the data is such that both numbers are same find fault with this argument if any uh, you haven't seen all the high school students that i have seen <laughs> often make this mistake of assuming that the world is like us it happens very often it happens inadvertent we presume that the world thinks like us world is like us. it is not so the human diversity is tremendous 
So I will tell you, you take CS101 class which I have taught 20 times in the last 40 years and the kind of divergence of views that you get is enormous. Including people as I explained some time ago that they don't even understand English properly. But forget that, their notions of maximum when spoken in terms of mathematical rigor, what you say is correct. But when I pose the problem as find the larger of the two, you have gone by the, uh, the, the name that I have used in the program max. If I had used the word larger, would you conclude the same thing? Yeah. So again, this is, a, this is a method that the teachers may use to drive home the main point so that you don't diverge. But you may diverge and thinking may occur. Now, the point I was making on effective communication to novices on a new concept is that you as communicator must in advance account for all possible reactions. And if all reactions do not come from the audience, you should actually pose that reaction. The idea is to kindle the thinking process in the minds of all the people who are listening to you, all novices. Please understand, learning does not happen by listening to lectures or by solving some problems. Learning happens when a human mind applies itself to multiple possibilities. And the ambition in effective communication to novices is to force every novice mind to think in multiple directions. In fact, the biggest advantage of a classroom assembly of the kind is that such discussions will help individuals to think about other alternatives. And the common discussion that emerges like this will ensure that everybody independent of one's own ideas of what is better, what is not better, will get to see the other side of the story. So that's, that's the part of the effective communication. Anyway, coming back to this, there are several attendant questions when I say max. A, both of them are same, then what happens? Okay. There is another subtle thing. If both of them are same, which of the two is declared as the largest by these two programs? Are they always the same number? 25 and 25. Is it first 25, that is A, is declared as maximum? Or is the second 25, B, that is declared as maximum? Both may be different. You cannot say that. Or they will definitely be different. Definitely be different. Because in one case, A is greater than B will be untrue. So B will be assigned max. In the other case, this condition will be untrue. So max will remain A. So they will, in fact, define two different numbers. And this should bring to another set of discussions among the novices. Does it make sense to distinguish between two numbers if they are same? So that is where your notion that max is understood to be whichever is the largest. And we are concentrating on the value which is the largest. It is not which value which is the largest. True and untrue, in some practical situations, you would like to identify which are all the numbers which are equal. For example, you have to announce the toppers in a class or the topper in a class. If there is one topper, you announce that person's name. But if there are five people who get exactly the same marks as the topper does, then you are required to announce the roll numbers and names of all the five people. This is exactly what you would do later on when you explain, for example, in a programming course, the notion of an array which contains in one column the marks or in another column or in another array the roll numbers and names. And then when you sort the array from largest to smallest, you also sort the corresponding roll numbers and names so that you know exactly which marks belong to whom. And when you pick up the top few, you will find out all those who have identical marks. Now, that concept will come later. Please note that whenever you have to find out the largest of a number of numbers, not two numbers, you will never ever think of using this approach. You will think of using only this approach. However, when initially you are explaining a concept to people, it is a moot point whether this is better or this is better. It depends upon how people think while finding out the largest of the two numbers. The fact of life is that if you give only two numbers to find out which is the larger, 
people will automatically think of comparing the two and saying this or that. But you give them a list of five numbers and ask them, find out whichever is the larger. No computer programming, just find out. Then mentally, they will keep sliding down the list, keeping in their mind an equivalent of max equal to this and comparing that max with the next number. This will happen automatically. Because even if you give people a list of 30 numbers, they will, in a single scan, they are capable of finding out whichever is the largest. Just written down list of 30 numbers. You agree? Now, suppose I started explaining the problem of using the conditional by giving a set of 30 numbers and asking them, how did they do that? Then automatically the second choice will emerge. Okay. Uh, just as an aside, in the standard textbooks, which sadly not just use this, but extend this to three variables also. In most of the classical textbooks, the problem of finding out largest of three numbers is always written through a complicated tree. And that is the first expression given. And nowhere it is stated that it is bad way of solving the problem. Now, this is the kind of conclusion that you would like your novice students to learn. And still be open to make up their own mind. The idea is not to impose your thought processes or your deduction, but to let the novices discover for themselves and be free to adapt anyone that they think is right. That is how the knowledge has to be shared. Okay. Now, yeah. In uh, the extra variable is not used, max is not used, and we at the time at the point of max equal to 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 when they compare with A, B and C, they will actually announce that number as maximum. So, there is no assignment to an additional variable or location. It is only printing whichever is more. And if you have to print whichever is more, then you do not need an extra variable. And therefore, the second choice does not even appear to be feasible in that approach. It is only this extension that is possible. As uh, I do not know whether I have said this adage, but when I was a young teacher teaching programming, my colleague Professor Kumar told me the method of teaching and learning programming. So, rule number one said that if there are m teachers teaching programming, then there are n ways in which they teach, and n is offered greater than m because the same teacher has different views on how to teach programming. That was rule number one. Rule number two was students learn programming not because of these n methods of teaching, but perhaps in spite of them. So the students learn programming independent. We grew up as teachers knowing these two, and therefore emphasizing that the discussion among students and the students making up their own minds is vitally important. Now, you have been TAs. The last question that I want to ask is, you would be conducting labs, for example. In the labs, you would have a batch of students. Has it ever occurred to you to use this kind of policy, where in the lab, when students are doing whatever they are doing, you just pose a question like this, ask them to answer in two or three minutes, ask them to discuss with their friends, and then ask them to come back with the refined answer. Do you not think that it will add tremendous value to you as a TA to kindling the minds of the people? You agree? Well, the idea is, suggestion is that in the subsequent part of your life here on the campus, whenever you become a TA, do try to experiment. Please don't forget that as TA, you are the direct representative of the instructor in charge for that batch of students. Those students look up to you as if you are the main instructor in charge. And to discharge that duty is not very simple. So you might try these kind of squiggles in small batches, but that is aside as I said. 
So in conclusion, I would put it like this, that talking to novices, it does not matter whether young or old, novices in a certain domain where you as a professional expert are going to explain some basic concepts to those novices is not a simple and straightforward matter at all. You should remember this while making your presentation for your MTech reports or PhD reports or something to novices. So some of you would have seen the poster presentations of PhD students. Excellently prepared posters highlighting all the important research discoveries or research points, etc., etc. But there are no two lines at the beginning which say, this is the problem that my solution relates to. Or something which tells a complete novice, a technical person, but novice in that field, what the whole thing is about. I would think that it is equally important to address such people because those people may not be experts in your field, but might be experts in other fields, or might be important people, important office bearers to whom you must convince about your idea. In both these cases, you will require many times to address these novices, so quote unquote novices. Novice is somebody who is not like you in a particular field. And to explain to them is not a straightforward. Only when the novices are students, you get a chance to force a discussion among themselves and make them think. For grown-ups, you don't have that choice. So when, the, when you are explaining to grown-ups, what is the alternative? Because they're not at your beacon command. You can't say uh, to, let's say, secretaries to the government of India, and you are explaining some concept, says, okay, now you discuss. And they'll throw you out. So what would be the way? This is my concluding question. When you do not have the novices in the form of bunch of youngsters who in some way can be commanded to apply their mind through discussions, thinking, etc., etc., how would you deal with grown -ups? Okay, we have only three minutes, so I will give you the answer. This is not necessarily the unique or the best answer, but this is the method I have learned to follow. So when you are explaining these concepts to people and when you have no chance of forcing them to discuss, you explain the alternatives and then you start speculating. You ask one or two questions to directly to people, no discussion, but you just say, sir, what is your opinion, sir, what is your opinion, sir, what is your opinion? Probably two or three conflicting opinions will come. And then use that opportunity to explain pros and cons of those two or three possible alternatives and additionally all the other alternatives that you have thought of ahead of time in your mind explain you say you have a point sir but it may also be interpreted like this it may also be interpreted like this so use that chance to explain additional concepts that you have or additional alternatives that you have to all the novices because remember one thing the grown-ups may not be commanded as youngsters but the grown-ups have a much greater maturity. And the grown-ups, therefore, would be able to absorb what you say. They are independently capable of thinking. They have developed that ability. All that you want to do is seed a thought in their mind. That this is also possible, this is also possible, this is also possible, this is also possible. All right? Thank you. Uh, next time, we will have the uh, presentation by uh, my colleague, Professor uh, Samir Sastrabuddhe, on use of visuals in the presentation. But what is the deadline for submission of your uh, research reports? Uh, I forgot. Huh? 31st of March, Monday. Please do not forget that deadline. And please do not wait till the last moment. The IIT Moodle is known to behave badly at the last moment of assignment submission deadline. So please do that well in advance, half an hour, one hour in advance. Okay? Fine. Thank you. All the best.